because they knew that people would recognize it. They would recognize the reference. And the reference is to one of the most famous British documentaries uh, in our history. So let's run the first clip. This is the night mail crossing the border, bringing the check and the postal order. Letters for the rich, letters for the poor, the shop at the corner and the girl next door. Pulling up Betok a steady climb, the gradients against her, but she is on time. Passing the shunter intent on its toil, moving the coke and the coal and the oil, girders for bridges, plastic for fridges, Bricks for the site are required by tonight. Grimy and grey is the engine's reflection. Down to the docks for the metal collection. The passenger train is full of commuters bound for the office to work in computers the teacher, the doctor, the actor in farce, the typist, the banker, the judge in first class, reading the times with a crossword to do, returning at night on the 642. That's a pretty, pretty poor copy of something, a documentary that was made over 60 years ago now. Uh, how many of you have seen Night Mail? Oh, great. Wow. Okay. Now, have you ever thought why this was famous, why this film was famous? It's basically, if you've seen it, it's a pretty ordinary documentary made at that period about the mail, the post, going from London to Edinburgh. Okay? It's 25 minutes long. 22 minutes, standard 1930s documentary. The last three minutes, first. And everyone remembers that. That's what they remember. Okay? And it's really interesting. And it's, a, it's partly because it's very, <coughs> it was very unusual. It's a very unusual uh, thing. But it's also beautifully done. And... They, they hired a very good poet called W.H. Auden. It's one of the first things he did. He worked with the unit. That it, was a, it was actually a commercial film made for the post office. And they hired, and it's his first collaboration, one of the most famous British composers, Benjamin Britten, uh, who was a very young guy then, and it was his first film commission. So we're going to run that now, just the clip with the, the thing, and you'll comp you can compare the two. And then have a... Th when, if you can, for those of you who can pick up the words, I hope you can hear some of them, um, just think about what's going on the soundtrack. Think about what's happening on the soundtrack as well as on the, on the picture. Night mail crossing the border, bringing the check and the postal order, letters for the rich, letters for the poor, the shop at the corner of the girl next door, pulling up B took a steady climb, the gradients against her, but she's on time. grass and moorland boulder, shoveling white steam over her shoulder, snorting noisily as she passes, silent miles of wind-bent grasses, birds turn their heads as she approaches, stare from the bushes at her blank-faced coaches, sheepdogs cannot turn her course, they slumber on with paws across, in the farm she passes, no one wakes but a jug in a bedroom gently shaped. The climb is done. Down towards Glasgow, she descends. Towards the steam tugs, yelping down the glade of cranes. Towards the fields of apparatus, the furnaces, set on the dark plain like gigantic chessmen. All Scotland waits for her. 
In the dark glens, beside the pale green sea lochs, men long for news. Letters of thanks, letters from banks, letters of joy from the girl and the boy, receipted bills and invitations to inspect new stock or to visit relations, but applications for situations and timid lovers, declarations and gossip, gossip from all the nations, new circumstantial news, financial letters with holiday snaps to enlarge in, letters with faces scrawled in the margin, letters from uncles, cousins and aunts, letters to Scotland from the south of France, letters of condolence to highlands and lowlands, notes from overseas to the Hebrides, written on paper of every hue, the pink, the barry, the white and the blue, the chatty, the catty, the boring, adoring, the cold and the fish, all the hearts are pouring, ever stupid, short and long, the type and the print and the spelt all wrong. Thousands are still asleep, dreaming of terrifying monsters, or a friendly tea beside the band at Cranston's or Crawford's. Asleep in working Glasgow, asleep in well-set Edinburgh, asleep in granite Aberdeen. They continue their dreams. But shall wake soon, and long for letters, and none will hear the postman's knock without a quickening of the heart, for who can bear to feel himself forgotten? Thank you.